Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. Have you ever wondered why some innovations spread rapidly while others struggle to catch on? Or why certain people adopt new products early while others wait for years? The answers to these questions are explained by a powerful framework called innovation diffusion theory. But what exactly is innovation diffusion theory? What are its main components? How does it help businesses introduce new ideas more effectively? And what are some real-world examples of it in action? In this video, I'll walk you through these key questions. Section 1, Definition Innovation diffusion theory was introduced by American communication theorist and sociologist Everett Rogers in 1962. It explains how, why, and at what rate new ideas and technologies spread through cultures and social systems. In essence, it helps us understand how innovations gain traction and how different groups respond differently to change. This theory is widely used in marketing, product development, education, and public health. Section 2, Key Elements of the Theory There are five key factors that influence the rate and success of innovation diffusion. Number 1. Relative advantage. This refers to how much better the innovation is compared to what it replaces. The greater the perceived improvement, whether in cost, convenience, speed, performance, or social prestige, the faster people will adopt it. For example, Uber offered a clear advantage over traditional taxis by providing on-demand rides through a mobile app, transparent pricing, and user reviews, which made it an easy sell to early adopters. Number 2. Compatibility. Compatibility measures how well the innovation fits into the target user's existing habits, values, and technologies. If the innovation aligns with users' current lifestyle or systems, they are more likely to accept it. For instance, Spotify was highly compatible with users who were already comfortable with digital music and playlists, making it easier to replace CDs or MP3 downloads. Number 3. Complexity. The more complex or difficult an innovation appears, the slower its adoption. If users don't understand how it works or feel overwhelmed, they'll resist change. That's why companies like Zoom gained popularity, because they offered a user-friendly interface and simple login process at a time when many people were switching to virtual communication during the pandemic. Number 4. Trialability. Trialability refers to how easily someone can test the innovation before fully committing. If users can try it risk-free, they're more likely to explore it. SaaS companies like Canva or Dropbox offer free versions of their products so users can experience value first, which accelerates adoption. Number 5. Observability. Observability is how visible the innovation and its benefits are to others. When people can see friends, coworkers, or influencers using a product successfully, they're more likely to follow. For example, Peloton's rise was fueled not just by fitness quality, but by its social visibility, people shared their workouts, rankings, and bike setups on social media, creating a powerful ripple effect. Section 3, The 5 Adopter Categories Rogers divided the population into five groups based on how soon they adopt new innovations. Group 1. Innovators, 2.5%. These are the pioneers. Innovators are adventurous, well-informed, and willing to take risks on new technologies. They often work in tech, R&D, or trend-focused industries and love being the first to try something new. For example, the first users of Google Glass were mostly tech enthusiasts, willing to test an imperfect but groundbreaking idea. Group 2. Early adopters, 13.5%. Early adopters are influential and respected opinion leaders. They tend to be more socially connected and serve as role models. They look for real value and aren't swayed just by hype. Businesses often focus on this group during launches, because their endorsement helps drive broader adoption. Think of how Tesla's Model S attracted early adopters who wanted cutting-edge innovation, environmental value, and social status. Group 3. Early majority, 34%. The early majority waits until there's solid evidence of value. They're pragmatic, risk-aware, and seek proven performance before trying something new. To reach this group, businesses need strong testimonials, clear ROI, and simplified onboarding. Amazon Web Services, AWS, grew dramatically after the early majority saw case studies from other successful tech companies. Group 4. Late Majority, 34%. The late majority is more skeptical and typically adopts due to social pressure or necessity. They require strong assurances, easy usability, and often lower costs. For example, people who resisted smartphones until budget-friendly models and simple interfaces, like Android 1, became available fall into this group. Group 5. Laggards, 16%. Laggards are the last to adopt, often due to tradition, low trust in innovation, or limited access. 
They usually switch only when old solutions become unavailable or obsolete. For example, some consumers only switched to streaming after DVDs stopped being produced or cable providers phased out legacy services. Section 4, Business Applications. Let's look at how innovation diffusion theory can be applied in real-world business scenarios. Number 1. Tech Product Launches. Companies like Apple often target early adopters with sleek design and premium pricing, then scale to the early majority with feature updates and broader availability. Number 2. Subscription Services. Spotify used trialability by offering free versions with limited features, lowering the barrier to adoption and accelerating growth across user categories. Number 3. E-commerce adoption. Amazon's early growth relied on making online shopping simple, low complexity, convenient, high relative advantage, and visible, with customer reviews to increase observability. Number 4. Sustainable products. Brands like Tesla initially targeted innovators and early adopters who were excited about electric vehicles. As charging networks and range improved, they captured the early and late majority by showcasing real-world value. Section 5, Summary. To sum up, innovation diffusion theory helps explain how new ideas spread and why people adopt them at different rates. By understanding the characteristics of innovations and the different adopter groups, businesses can design smarter product launches, marketing strategies, and change initiatives. Whether you're launching the next big app or rolling out a new company process, mastering this theory can increase your chances of success. That's all for today's topic. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment below, and subscribe for more insights on innovation, strategy, and entrepreneurship. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.